So all your microservices are ready and you are ready for the deployment. But there are a lot of microservices, there are hundreds and thousands of microservices and you want to deploy everything on a Kubernetes cluster. So all those microservices will be deployed to a Kubernetes cluster in a default namespace. And to maintain all those services in a Kubernetes cluster without a namespace in a default namespace, it will be very difficult. So that's when Kubernetes namespace comes in handy. So namespaces are a virtual cluster inside your Kubernetes cluster. So it helps us to divide your entire application into a small small clusters inside a Kubernetes cluster right so it will help us to divide the similar kind of application like database services different our UI different our backend different so it helps us to maintain everything in a different manner so that we can identify what all things are deployed at which places and it will be easy to maintain so let's see what is namespaces in Kubernetes cluster and how to work with namespaces Yeah, Kubernetes comes with a four default namespaces. So these are the namespaces that are already there and accordingly all the resources are being placed inside each of the namespaces. So let's see how to get the namespaces. So if you go to the terminal and if you give the command kubectl get namespaces you will get this four namespaces okay the first is default cube node lease cube public and cube system these four are the default namespaces provided by the kubernetes this kubernetes dashboard is not part of the kubernetes cluster it is the part of the mini cube that we have installed in local okay but generally only this four will come in a kubernetes cluster so let's see what are these different namespaces so the first one is the default namespace so whenever any new resource is created or no namespace is defined for any of the resources all those resources will tag to the default names for so whatever resources you are creating like pods deployment services ingress anything and if you are not defining any of the namespaces all those will be tagged to the default namespace the next is cube system cube system will have the resources that are been created by the kubernetes system itself so all the resources that are already been created while creating the kubernetes cluster like your master nodes master nodes will be having the different resources right so all those will be tagged to the cube system so kubernetes does not recommend you to use cube system for uh, creating all your new resources okay you can create a new namespaces and you can use that or you can use directly default namespace so we should not be modifying anything in a cube system namespace the next one is the cube public this cube public namespace is readable or accessible by all the users it is automatically created when a kubernetes cluster is created it will have all the public information like the cluster information and all those things so anyone can access this information the next one is the cube node lease so this is the newly created namespace in the latest versions of kubernetes this namespace is used for the lease objects associated with the each nodes this will improve the performance of the nodes and it will also improve the heartbeats so this will determine the availability of all the nodes in a kubernetes cluster so these are all the four namespaces available in the kubernetes cluster now why you need a namespace suppose you have hundreds and thousands of applications that you have to deploy in your kubernetes cluster to maintain everything in a single namespace would be very difficult and if multiple teams are working together and if there is any change in the configuration or any change in the application itself then it will change everything in that particular namespace so how we can use namespaces if we are working in a multiple teams right multiple teams are working with multiple applications on a same kubernetes cluster then for that team we can create a different namespaces and they can deploy their application in their particular namespaces so there are a few things that we can take care of like the name of the application or the resources in a particular namespace is not accessible directly to the other namespace so suppose i'm creating my app deployment in namespace one then i can create my app deployment in namespace two as well because they both are not associated with each other they are both in the different namespaces so this way if there is any change in any of the one namespace it is not affected in the other namespace so any one team has to do any of the changes in their particular application they can do it easily without affecting the other applications and we can also use namespaces when we are having multiple applications so we can use one namespace for all our ui components one namespace for all our backend services a different namespace for a different worker services for a database we can create a different namespace so this way everything will be bifurcated all the things will be associated within that particular range and we can connect everything using the services we can also use namespaces for 
maintaining the resource limits okay so suppose if you are creating multiple namespaces then you can also define the resources that can be used by a particular namespaces so suppose i want few of the resources that are been accessed by only particular namespaces then i can create all those resources i can create a configuration so that all those resources can be accessed by that particular namespaces only so there is no blockage of the resources for the other namespace or the other application as well and if you want to use one single cluster for your lower environments like dev and stage environments you want to use the same cluster then also you can use the namespaces you can create multiple namespaces for dev and stage or QA and you can deploy your applications accordingly all your dev components dev pods you can deploy in your dev namespace for the stage in QA you can deploy in your stage in QA namespaces so this way we can do the bifurcations and we can deploy all our applications accordingly without affecting the other application or without affecting the other services so one thing to note here is all the resources created in one space cannot directly access the other resources in the other namespace so suppose you have created ui services backend services and the database services so how to connect those resources if they are not directly able to connect each other then how to connect them at that time service comes in picture right we already saw service in the earlier videos so service is a component that can be accessed within the namespace as well so if you have backend in one namespace and database in another namespace then you can connect both using a service itself there are few components that are not related to namespace and there are few components that are related to namespace so suppose my node is there right service is there so these are not related to a namespace so they are defined in the kubernetes cluster beyond the scope of a namespace and there are few components like pods config maps and other things other resources that are bound to any of the namespaces so there is a command in the description below from that you can check that which are the resources available with the namespace and which are the resources are not available within the namespace so namespace is very useful for maintaining and creating our applications so let's see how we can create namespaces and how we can deploy our applications in a particular namespace so here you saw that we are having this many namespaces available when we do kubectl get namespaces we have four default namespaces of the kubernetes and one for the minikube now to create a namespace the command is kubectl create namespace and we can give any namespace over here i'm giving my namespace over here okay and once i hit enter namespace will be created if i do the command again kubectl get namespace you can see that my namespace is created here you can see that i have one deployment file uh, there is a kind of deployment and i'm deploying one application this is the image daily code buffer docker publish 0.0.3 .0 you have seen this in the earlier video as well okay so let us deploy this in a namespace okay so to deploy this in a particular namespace what we can do is we can use kubectl apply hyphen f deploy.yaml once i hit directly over here all the deployments all the different resources will be created in a default namespace but here i want to be created this in a particular namespace that i have created which is my namespace so to apply all this configuration in a particular namespace i can define hyphen hyphen namespace equals to my namespace the name of the namespace once i hit enter all this configuration will be applied to this particular my namespace okay the error was i give the space over here okay now let's hit the enter again okay and you can see that the deployment is created okay now if i check the deployment again with kubectl get deployments you can see that you are seeing no resources available let me clear it out and do again you can see that no resources available because it is checking in the default namespace we have to check the my namespace over here okay what i'll do i need to give hyphen and flag for the namespace and then i'll define my namespace okay so you can see that within the my namespace my app deploy is available and it is ready same way with the pods if i check kubectl get pods hyphen name my namespace okay you can see that pod is running okay so this way you can apply all your configuration within a particular namespace so here i am passing all the configurations within the particular command line but it is not a recommended way what we can do here is we can apply all this configuration we can apply all these namespace settings in our configuration file itself i have my configuration file over here deployment.yaml in this particular metadata information only i'll define my namespace so it is documented well so anyone can see this particular file and can directly identify okay this particular settings this particular configuration in the kubernetes cluster has to be applied on this particular namespace so let me add those configuration over here i'll just add namespace information 
new space equals to my new space so we can apply this configuration as well so before that let us delete this particular deployment okay so to delete this deployment what we'll do kubectl delete hyphen f deploy.yaml and we need to specify the namespace as well right okay you can see that deployment has been deleted if i do again kubectl get pods namespace you can see that it's terminating and no resources available same for the deployment no resources available okay let's clear this out now here i have already defined the namespace over here so i don't have to define namespace in the command line again so i'll just do kubectl apply hyphen f deploy.yaml once i hit enter all the configurations will be applied in my new namespace so if i do kubectl get deployment my namespace you can see that i'll be getting the deployment over here the same way if i see i'll get the pods as well so this way you can define your namespaces you can configure all your applications with the different namespaces according to the requirement and you can take the advantages of this particular resource so i hope you like this quick video on kubernetes namespaces if you have any questions or queries let me know in the comment section below give us a thumbs up if you like this video subscribe to my channel for the upcoming videos till then happy coding see ya